to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas shares stories about some of the interesting people, places, and things in the state, starting with a look at the filming of the movie Picnic. Next, hear about snakes of Kansas and how they terrorized early settlers. And learn about the Lovejoys, a family from New Hampshire, who in 1855 settled in the area near Manhattan. We'll finish up with a poem from Ron Wilson. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, good morning again. This is around Kansas. And today, instead of being in the Dillon House, we're outside the Dillon House in the shadow of the state capitol, which you can kind of see behind us. They've got a lot of great stuff going on at the Dillon House, so they're setting up for an event this morning, and, and we don't get mind getting out of the way for a big party, so <laughs> yeah. there you go. So what's coming up? What's on your agenda? You know, May is such a busy month. It is. You know, we, we were just at the Sampler Festival, of course, and had a wonderful time with all those folks. And since I live in a cemetery, of course, the big <laughs> event in May is Memorial Day and Memorial Weekend, and we have so many events at the cemetery. And one of the ones that you can still register for is the Ride for the Fallen. The Military Veterans right. Project sponsors this, and so um, motorcycle riders from anywhere, you know, all over, ride in honor of a fallen veteran. So you can contact the Military Veterans Project online. They've got a Facebook page, a website, and all that stuff. So on Memorial Day Saturday, I think that's the 23rd, they will actually gather at 8 a.m. for registration, a pancake feed, and all that good stuff on the grounds of the Veterans Administration Hospital in Topeka. And then they will uh, ride to the cemetery where we'll have some ceremonies there. And it's going to be a really beautiful, beautiful event. Huh. Well, you know, uh, 60 years ago this month, uh, the uh, movie Picnic was filmed in Kansas. Uh, and so I've been doing some research on that. And I have some really interesting and fun things to talk about during the filming of that movie. Of course, one of the tragedies of that was the town of Udall was totally flattened sure. by a tornado just after the filming had started. 77 people were killed. Wow, I and had no idea. In fact, the, uh, the filming of the movie was, uh, was constantly plagued by uh, storm warnings and rain and all of that. But anyway, there's some very interesting uh, trivia about the filming of that movie in 1955 in the month of May and it was filmed in like six different communities in the state of Kansas. Well I knew that Udall had had that big tornado. Yeah. I didn't realize it uh, was so close with the filming of Picnic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was so. Anyway, springtime in Kansas. You yeah, know, it's exciting, isn't it? Well, and then I'm going to do some stories on William Inge, who, of course, is a native Kansan and uh, quite the renowned uh, playwright. And uh, of course, he wrote that. Uh, but there's also a story about the ending of the movie, which I'll tell you about when we do the story. You know, there. Speaking of Kansas writers, since uh, since I'm in the cemetery. You know, who's a really cool person that we've got um, as a permanent resident of Topeka Cemetery is Hal Foster. Do you know who Hal Foster is? I have was? no idea. He was the cartoonist that did Tarzan and Prince Valiant. Oh, okay. So his in-laws are actually, um, that was the Topeka connection, so that's why he's in our cemetery. But yeah, and Prince Valiant with all the focus on the medieval stuff, you know, the kind of enjoying a revival and Tarzan. Heck, Tarzan's never gone out of style. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have some fun stories coming up for you about people, places, and things around Kansas. In fact, well, we'll find out what today's all about after the break. Biodiesel made from sustainable resources is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, Biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. 
It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the yellow brick road. Welcome back to Around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich, and with me is Frank my Chafin. handsome co-host, Frank Chafin. So, Frank, in the last segment, you were talking about the filming of the movie Picnic. Uh -huh. Now, what were the communities that were involved in that? Well, there were like uh, six of them. They started in Salina, then they moved to Hutchinson, then they were in Halstead. And, uh, I mean, in fact, the title of the, of the town that was the hypothetical Kansas town was Salinson. Uh-huh which was the combination of Salina and Hutchinson. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And of now, course, the train scenes, you know, where it shows them on the train uh -huh. and stuff, is that in Kansas? Yes, they... it was. Yes, it was. Now, like, like we said, they were plagued by a lot of uh, storms and all that, and some of the scenes were actually shot then back in California on a soundstage. Well, simply that's because, what I was thinking, yeah. yeah, because of the weather being such a factor. Yeah. Well, not only that and mosquitoes, they were <laughs> plagued by mosquitoes. <laughs> and so, anyway, it was, it was almost a total disaster. God but bless. Nevertheless, uh, you know, the movie was very successful and had six Academy Award nominations and won two. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so anyway. Well, let's take a look at more. Okay. Well, 60 years ago, uh, in May 1955, a movie called Picnic was filmed in the state of Kansas. And there are a couple of reasons why. It's because the fictitious town of Salinson was located here. And the author of the original uh, play on Broadway is William Inge, who, of course, is a native Kansan. The movie was actually filmed in several different towns in the state of Kansas, in Sterling, Salina, Hutchinson, Halstead, Nickerson. Now, tragically, during the filming of the movie in May of 1955, a tornado wiped out the town of Udall. I mean, literally wiped it off the face of the earth. 77 people were killed in that tornado. It was a tragic state of affairs at the time. but. In fact, that spring, that May, there were numerous uh, tornado warnings and rainstorms, which of course wreaked havoc on the filming of the movie. The movie starred William Holden, Kim Novak, and Rosalind Russell. The uh, film uh, received six Academy Award nominations that year. They won two, one for Best Art Direction and one for Best Film Editing. Rosalind Russell was actually nominated for Best Actress, but because she didn't really campaign for the award, didn't actually win it. Uh, there is a lot of fun trivia around the filming of this movie in the state of Kansas, and, well, I'm going to do some more. But for right now, ain't it fun being here in Kansas? I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. 
I will take action. This time, for all time. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Well, here we are again. I'm Frank Chafin. This is Deb Goodridge. And there's something about snakes. Oh, man. Oh, Much man. as I hated to do this, this segment, it is so fascinating because, you know, as a historian, you read those old diaries and the letters back home. What were people most concerned about, especially New Englanders? Snakes, because they had not seen snakes of the size and magnitude and the the um, the often occurring snakes that they found in the Kansas Territory. So, uh, yeah, as any native Kansan can tell you, there's there's some snake stories here. Yikes! I know, I know. Stay tuned. <laughs> When New Englanders came to the Kansas Territory in the 1850s, what did they write home about? What was the one thing they had not expected while making their homes in this wild country? The bushwhackers from Missouri took a back seat to the daily occurrence of snakes. For New Englanders, the size and proliferation of the serpents was shocking and very scary. People were scrambling to build homes, often crude cabins to start. The floors and walls were rarely secure from the elements or from these beasts. Julia Lovejoy, whose family settled in Douglas County, spoke of copperheads hanging from the cupboards over her baby's bed and of her child's being bitten in the garden. She also described the harrowing account of her neighbor. The woman turned over in the night to nurse her baby sleeping beside her when she felt something sting her lip. She called for her husband to get a light, and when the lamp was lit, they were horrified to find a rattlesnake had crawled into the bed. The husband went to the trunk for medicine and found two more coiled behind it. The poor woman's neck swelled so that it was feared she would suffocate. The woman survived, but how on earth could you ever have a peaceful night's sleep again? Another man wrote to his mother that he had seen a snake on the Neosho River with its head on one bank and its tail on the other. Really? Probably no other group of animals has had the variety and expanse of tall tails credited to them as have the snakes, writes Robert F. Clark. As the stories go, there are snakes that can put their tails in their mouths and roll hoop-like downhill, snakes that are capable of milking cows dry, snakes that fly into pieces when struck and later reassemble into whole snakes again, snakes that charm their prey and others too numerous to mention. Some of these tales deal specifically with the poisonous power of snakes or with snakes that are venomous. There is the blow viper whose very breath is poisonous. The butt of this fable is the utterly harmless hognose snake. Many persons think that the poisonous fang of a snake is the structure which is frequently flicked in and out of the snake's mouth. This is really its tongue and is present in all snakes. Four of the many untruths about poisonous snakes are, one, rattlesnakes cannot cross a horsehair rope. They can. Two, cottonmouth water moccasins cannot bite underwater. They can. Three, rattlesnakes always rattle before they strike. Not always. And four, the rattles present on the tail of a rattlesnake indicate the snake's age. No, a new segment is added each time that the skin is shed, which may occur several times during a year. We fear them, but they fascinate us as they fascinated our early pioneers. Here's another gardening tip with Annette Jackson from Jackson's Greenhouse. Fresh herbs are healthy and add zest to almost every recipe. The folks at Jackson's grow more than 50 varieties of herbs right here. 
and many are available year round. Our staff has hands-on experience and can't wait to assist you with your herb needs. Stop in and see us at Jackson's. We're open seven days a week. Topeka's largest selection of homegrown herbs is at Jackson's Greenhouse with four-inch pots starting at just three seventy-nine. dollars Jackson's Greenhouse has what you need today. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Around Kansas. Well, Frank, in the last segment, I mentioned Julia Lovejoy when we were talking about the snakes, and she was one of those early settlers from New Hampshire. And, you know, I, I hate to admit this. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed of this. I used to make fun of Julia. Um, I would do talks all over the country, and I'd show Julia as this typical New Englander who moved to Kansas, and she's not real pretty. And, of course, photography back then, you know, people looked real somber. You know what I'm talking about. And I would joke, and I'd say, you know, this is life before Mary Kay Cosmetics were available <laughs> and all this. But And then the more I learn about Julia and the more life experience I have, I feel terrible for making fun of her. So this segment is my homage to Julia, you know, and kind of an apology for making fun of her all these years. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. <laughs> Born in Lebanon, New Hampshire, Julia Louisa Hardy Lovejoy reportedly experienced a deep religious conversion at the age of nine. From that moment on, she was a devout Methodist who wanted to influence the world around her. She wanted to become a missionary or to find another application for her religious ardor. At one point, she remarked, If I have not done good, I have done evil. The passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act and the ensuing conflict between free state and pro-slavery interest in the territory provided Lovejoy an opportunity with her husband Charles Hasseltine Lovejoy, an itinerant Methodist Episcopal preacher, Julia moved in 1855 from New Hampshire to Kansas Territory. The couple came as part of the New England Immigrant Aid Society, which recruited anti-slavery settlers to move into the new territory. Lovejoy saw the end of slavery as a way to better the world, and she became the voice of bleeding Kansas for many in the East. Her letters to Eastern newspapers told of the difficulties of migration, including illness and the high cost of travel and provisions. We look back at these pioneers and think that they were better, stronger, able to endure more than we. That does them and their experiences a disservice. They had the same feelings and passions, ambition and embarrassments. Julia Lovejoy writes in 1857 from Palmyra, now the town of Baldwin City. Mr. Lovejoy threw his soiled nether garment across his carriage seat to dry as it was well saturated with perspiration. When he turned to look for it, lo, it had all disappeared, save the wristband and wee bit of one sleeve, where, think you it was, why mulched into the maw of a live ox, who was forced to disgorge its contents in stanter. But ah me, the rents and tears were unmendable. If we can enjoy health as formerly, we shall, after all, enjoy much of missionary life in Kansas. 
Charles Lovejoy was put in charge of the Fort Riley Mission in 1855, and the family built the first house on the Manhattan Town Company site. Joya's letters give first-hand information on the pioneer settlement that is the present-day city of Manhattan. Then they moved to Lawrence during the height of territorial conflict. Her diary is in the collection of the Kansas State Historical Society. From the Land of Kansas is a trademark program that helps Kansas businesses grow, produce, process, or manufacture Kansas products. Let's meet Crooked Post Winery, a new Kansas winery built in 2013 at Lake Perry and inspired by Italian architecture and Italian wines. Their wine is made true to the flavor of the grapes they grow, crafted by hand and not manipulated to taste like any other wine. Crooked Post Winery uses French-American hybrid grapes that are suitable for the Kansas climate. Every year's varietal wine will be different than the last and something special to look forward to. They have a 900 square foot event room that can be rented for small weddings or other special occasions. Or you can just come and sit and relax by the fire. You can also enjoy their annual special events that celebrate wine. For wine tasting and vineyard tours, call 785-876-9990 or visit them on the web at www.crookedpostwinery.com. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Here's another gardening tip with Annette Jackson from Jackson's Greenhouse. Fairy gardening is now one of the fastest growing hobbies in the country. It is a great way also to introduce your children and grandchildren to the exciting world of plants. Basic fairy gardening is simple, affordable, and may be expanded as your interest grows. Let us help you. Jackson's has the best selection of many plants and accessories in Topeka. Visit Jackson's and check out our great fairy garden collection. Bring the kids and grandkids too. Jackson's Greenhouse has what you need today. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. A cowboy has a lot of dirty, messy jobs, and oftentimes that involves the south end of a cow going north. But when we're sorting cattle, there's a very important job, and that is the job of the gate man. It's kind of a thankless job because he has to make some split-second decisions. In his honor, this poem is entitled, The Gate Man. There are certain thankless jobs that you encounter in this life, like a policeman given parking tickets, or perhaps the farmer's wife who was sent to town for parts. Oh, it's about yay big. We don't know the model number, but it looks like a thingamajig. Those jobs are truly thankless, but among the cowboy clan, there is no job so thankless as that of the gate man. When we go to sorting cattle, then the gate man's simple job is to open and shut the gate when we separate the mob. But that task ain't nearly as simple as it sounds. He must decide in a split second with chaos all around. He may have angry steers a barreling straight toward him, or a crazy cow that will dodge or jump or kick upon a whim. He gets splattered by manure and have the gate tore from his hand but he must do the job just right to meet the boss's demand. His head may be spinning from the contrary directions about. One cowboy says to stop the calf and the other says, turn him out. So the gate man's job is thankless, but he can always protect his fate by saying to his critics, all right, it's your turn to man the gate. Happy trails. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Gateway to Oz, under the rainbow this 
this is where it was Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes And churned homemade ice cream Let me tell you Kansas is more than tornadoes We're the best part of Dorothy's dream We're the best part